it's 2022, and I don't know if you guys know this or not, but that's an entire year more than it was the last time I did one of these episodes. So, every single month of the year, I go through and find five awesome Linux apps that I can share with you, my community, and this has proven to be a really popular little series. So, I thought I would continue it in the new year, and that's what we're going to do today. So, I have five really awesome apps for you. Let's go ahead and jump right on in. But before we do, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you don't miss next month's list. And if you have applications that you'd like to suggest for this list, you can leave those in the comments section below. Just remember, don't leave a link because YouTube will actually just go ahead and delete those things. And that would be pointless then of you actually leaving that comment. So, now, let's go ahead and jump in. Okay, so the first app on the list for this month is called App Image Pool. Now, one of the primary complaints against app image that I've always had is that they're A, hard to find, B, hard to use, and C, hard to update. App Image Pool strives to fix those problems. First of all, it acts as kind of like a app store for app images. So you can go through and, as you see on the screen, go through and actually find in app images that exist in a app store like package. It's really cool. And it really does solve the problem of discoverability when it comes to finding things that actually have app images. Now, it's not perfect, as you'll see in the B-roll. There are issues in where there are apps in the store that don't actually have app images attached to them. That's a problem, but this is a fairly new project, so I'm expecting it to not be perfect. Another thing you'll notice that is kind of weird is that sometimes there are apps in there that just don't feel finished. So for example, later on you'll see me search for Caden Live and it doesn't have any like screenshots, no information is there and you can't download it. Some applications don't even have a download button, they're just kind of here. It's weird that they have entries in the store but no ability to download them. It's just one of those things that kind of make this feel unfinished. However, the things that do work, work really well. So you see me download Blender, where you can go through and just download Blender, and then you can launch it right from here. It would allow you to update it from here. I didn't actually get to test that because there actually has to be an update to be actually available for you to test that, but it will update from here. It will also allow you to uninstall things from here. So it, it's great because it will allow you to go through and actually have a complete list of all the installed app images that you have. Another cool thing is if there's a certain version of an app that you want to use, say that you know for a fact that it's stable and it has an app image for that version, you can go through and search through a list of all the app images for every version that ha they have available. And while that's not universal, there's most apps I would say don't actually have that functionality, but some of them do and that's cool. So. This application holds a ton of promise. Now, I have not been able to test whether or not this adds the app images to your application menu or not. It didn't work for me with Rofi, but Rofi is kind of finicky that way, so it's possible that if you're using a desktop environment, this might add it to the menu for that desktop environment. I'm not sure. I will also say there's not very much here in the way of settings, mostly things for um, where you want the applications to be installed and for dark mode. That's really it. So that is App Image Pool. It's really awesome and you should definitely check it out if you are interested in trying something that isn't a flat pack or a snap. Okay, so the next app on the list this month is called Persepolis Download Manager. I'm, I'm maybe mispronouncing that, but I don't know. This was suggested by uh, Chemist Neo and the Discord. So thank you for submitting an application, Chemist Neo. I really appreciate that. So basically, what Persepolis Download Manager is is just a download manager. It's written, as far as I can tell, in Qt. So if you're using KDE Plasma, this will fit in way better than it does in DWM. So that's one of the, I I don't like to start out negative, but just to know if you're using a tiling window manager, as you'll see later on the B-roll, sometimes things get a little finicky here. It also didn't respect Cavantum, which I have installed, and all my other Qt apps respect Cavantum, but this one did not. So just those two negative bits out of the way, if you're looking for a download manager that will help you manage downloads, which is, seems silly to say, Persepolis is actually a really good option. It goes through, it has the ability to schedule downloads, it has the ability to save downloads for later, and then it has all the basic 
tools you'd expect from a download manager, things like managing how many downloads you can have at a, going at a time, how fast those downloads can going can go together, you know, download and upload speeds. You can also uh, stop them mid-download and then resume them later, which is probably the best feature I have for a download manager because if you're downloading something big but you have to go away and you don't want it to keep going while you're gone, uh, you can stop it and start up later. That's really cool. And then you can also go through and do things like download playlists from certain sites. Now, I have not actually tested this out, but it's apparently a feature. And it also has quite a few settings, as you'll see in the B-roll there somewhere along the line. There's a quite a few, as you would expect with things that are written kind of for KDE, there are quite a few settings that you can kind of tinker with. So Perceptless Download Manager, if I'm pronouncing that right, is actually a really good download manager if you're looking for a native, non-Electron app. I'm pretty sure this is not written in Electron uh, to manage your downloads. I really like it. Now, I do have some qualms. Like, I don't know why when you start a, a download, it has to open up another window. That's kind of annoying. I also don't care that it doesn't really play well with DWM. I definitely, if you're going to use this with a Tiling Window Manager, institute a rule so that it's always floating. And institute a rule so that the window that pops up oddly... Uh, is also floating so that it doesn't take up the whole screen. It seems to work better that way. So that is Persepolis Download Manager. Okay, so the next application on the list is called Font Preview. And what Font Preview is, is a terminal application that allows you to preview fonts. Now there is a way to view this, like in view your fonts inside the terminal using this application, using something like Uberzug. I was unable to get that to work, but I'm still going to try to get that to work later on. But the, the basic functionality is that it's an FZF, like fuzzy finder for your fonts. You go through and you search for things using FZF. It then highlights whatever you searched for. You hit enter and it will spring up an SXIV preview window of that font. So you can see what it looks like. That's literally what it does. Now, there are a few things you can mess around with it. You can change the size of the font. You can change the background and the full color of the font. You can change the preview text. You can change... Uh, so, for example, with the preview text, if you wanted to go through and change it so that it said something different instead of the default ABC alphabet, it, you could do the lazy dog jumped over the fox or whatever the hell that saying is. Uh, you could go through and have it say something sp particular. You can also change the position of the font preview so it's, you know, in a certain position in the window. And basically that's it. So there's not a ton of stuff here that you can do. What I would really like is if you go through and actually set fonts using this application, uh, like system fonts, but that would be way hard, like because different distros have different ways of setting fonts and stuff. So uh, that's asking too much. I understand that. But just the fact that you can go through and preview fonts and then know exactly what those fonts are called. So you can then copy and paste the name of the font into whatever config file you're working with. That's really cool. And it means you don't have to deal with GTK based applications that can be somewhat finicky sometimes uh, or require root permissions just to even run. So that is pr font preview. It's really cool and really simple. I really like it. Okay, so the next app on the list is called Flat Seal. Now, this one here is a very nerdy app, and it's for people who use a lot of flat packs. Now, I'm not one of those people. I use an Arch-based distro, which means I pull most of my applications from the AUR. But if you're using something like MX Linux or Fedora or something like that, where you might be using a lot of flat packs, this is a really cool application. And it's very simple and for good reason. All it does is allow you to manage the permissions of the applications that you use through Flatpak. And when I say permissions, I mean literally everything. Can it connect to the network? Can it see your home directory? Can it manage your windows? Can it even exist in X? XOR, can it exist in Wayland? Can it do all, I mean, literally every th single thing that it might need permissions for, like SSH, access to the root directory, access to Bluetooth, access to volume and cameras and all that stuff, everything is here. And you can turn things on and off as you want. Now, I will say that if you turn something off like file access or XORG access, chances are the application is not going to work. It's just probably not because it's probably going to be built for, uh, it's probably going to be built 
necessitating access to whatever those things are. There's a reason why it has access to those things. However, things like your camera, things like the sound and your audio and stuff like that probably can be disabled without breaking things. Now, it's not a guarantee, but it's chances are stuff like that you can go through and disable if you don't want them to have access to the camera. So, for example, if you are using RetroArch, it does not need access to the camera. Same thing, it doesn't need access to Bluetooth, and it shouldn't be dis shouldn't be enabled by default anyways, but if it is, you can turn those things off and make sure that your applications aren't doing anything nefarious. That's literally all FlatSeal does. It manages your flat pack permissions. It's very much similar to what you'd get on a mobile device where you're going through and managing permissions for your mobile devices. And that means you can go through and be very minute in what access these applications have, similar to what you can for on like iPhone or Android. So that is flat seal. Okay, so the last one on the list is called QPrompt, and this is my favorite app of the month. I usually save the one that I enjoy the most for the last, and that's just because I'm an evil person. So basically what QPrompter is, is a teleprompter application. So this is not going to be useful for everybody. I can already point that out. Most people don't have a, a use for a teleprompter. But for those of you who per, who do content creation of like any kind, whether you're doing a podcast or a video or whatever, and you write scripts or anything like that, QPrompter is really cool and it has just an absolute ton of features. I can't even get over the amount of features that it has. So it actually allows you to write scripts right here in QPrompt if that's what you want to do. I don't know why you'd want to. Uh, maybe if you're just writing something really short like I do later on in the B-roll, you can go through and just write it here. But it'll also allow you to input just regular old .txt files. I'm not sure if it'll let you import other types of files. I didn't try that. I just tried the .txt because it, it works fine. But I'm assuming it probably would allow you to import other things as well. Otherwise, you could use something like Pandoc to transition things from like Markdown to .txt. It wouldn't be hard at all. So the thing about QPrompt is that there's just a ton of features. So you can change the text size. You can change how fast and how slow it scrolls. Uh, you can change how many, how far the lines are apart. There's a few settings that you can change. You can go through and change where the the, the, the arrows along the sides are. You can change whether or not the, the there's a bar along the, the middle of it so that things are kind of like highlighted as it scrolls. You can put up a timer so that it times how long you've been talking or how long it estimates you have or how long the like the text would take you to read like so if if you have so many words or whatever it'll say well you have the you know two this will take you 2 minutes to read and then it'll kind of count down as it scrolls through so you can kind of time yourself so say you want to create like a 15 minute video you could go through and do that you know how much text you'd have to have in order to get to 15 minutes at the current velocity of the text that scrolls through so that is q prompt and it's just kind of awesome now like i said it's not for everyone like most people don't need a teleprompter like at all but if you do i haven't found one of those one of these applications that work this well it has a lot of other features too so for example if you're you've set up some kind of hardware mechanism where uh, similar to like a professional teleprompter you could go through and mirror this onto like a like a uh, some some other surface or whatever you could go through and do that. So this allows you to uh, flip things around so that they're it's scrolling the other direction. It allows you to change the background. You can go through and make it opaque so that it can be over, over top of other content if you wanted to do that. There's just a ton of stuff here that you can do, and I really like it. And everyone knows that who's watched this channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm not a scripter. Like I don't script these videos like at all. I've tried it before and I was actually made fun of in that video because you guys could see me going like this, you know, reading lines by lines. I don't know whether or not this using QPrompt would actually have me continue to do that or not, but uh, I could see myself if I wanted to improve these videos at least a little bit more, I could go through and do some scripting in some other, the more structured videos and see if I could go through and, you know, use this to improve 
the the video is just a little bit so there's not so many ums and alls and stutters and crap like that so uh, that is QPrompt I really really like it this is probably of the applications that we talked about this month the one that I will for sure be leaving installed so that is QPrompt and uh, that is actually it for this video. So if you have applications that you'd like to see on this list, leave those in the comment section below. If you have comments on any of the applications that I shared with you this time, you can leave those in the comment section below. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. I really do appreciate that. You can you can follow me on Twitter at LinuxCast. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Sid A, Devon, East Coast Web, Patrick L, Primus, Marcus, Meglin, Jackson F. Tools, Steve A, CyberGuy Linux, Garrick, Mitchell, Arch Center, Carbon Dated, Sean, Jeremy, Odin, Merrick, Camp, Josh Lee, J Dog, The Beasties, Rock, Crucible, and Dark Bandit 6. Thanks everybody for watching. I'll see you next time.